what is up everybody welcome back to the burndown youtube channel we are still out here on the 480e install and i was working on it yesterday and i would, i just it just hit me all of the sudden and i was like yeah i think i'm done and it was about five o'clock and then sitting in the sinks it's been hot as i'll get out i just like baked and i was like i quit so let me fill you in on where we are picking up today and then we are going to start making patches for the transmission tunnel yay so we have been trying to stuff a 480e in here and this is where we are so i i showed a little bit of this in the other video but we kind of lost steam and i think it's probably from heat exhaustion or something so let's recap real quick this is what we got going on we got the 480e in we've got our cross member hooker header my buddy dylan hooked me up with we got everything sitting in place we got a yoke a sonics yoke from our boys over at war performance and then we finished the driveline safety loop this is welded in and where it is going to live got a string of dara make sure that we are i love that word by the way fun fun you you coined a phrase so we got the string of dara in place so everything's kind of centered and it's where it should live and then what i did yesterday because i started a new video but i ran out of steam we squared up the cut i took it a little further back there's a lip right here so we could bring it up and over the safety loop. And then I took it off and to the side to kind of make it a little more even on the patch. So it wasn't such a weird wonky patch. And then um, I bolted, well, not bolted, strapped, I should say, a piece of uh, three quarter tubing to the top of the transmission as a reference. So that way, even if we were building something and you couldn't see it and you were pushing on it, welding it, you're not encroaching on the space. This will guarantee that I've got at least three quarter inch uh, worth of room so I'd like to not be touching this maybe give it a little headroom but in case we're being you know froggy and we're over there and we're not paying attention we're stuffing things in and I got the glue stick out and we're welding stuff we don't smash it down enough to where we basically screw ourselves so this is cheap insurance here that's why I did that and then this is where we got we were making looks like cotton candy I took my clean strip wheel and I was trying to clean the edge off and I was getting into this tar and it was just gunking up and throwing it everywhere. And I was, I just, I just gave up. So we're going to scrape this, scrape all this stuff down. I think I got some acetone. We'll clean all that up, throw some pliers on here and kind of pull this out a little bit. So it's a little bit further away because we're going to have the harness again. It's going to plug in all this stuff here. And then we will get rolling on making some patches. So the goal is... I think we're gonna start back here. We'll get this guy covered, kind of take it up to like maybe here or so. And then we need to find the angle that we need or if we need a couple to stay above the height of the transmission. The reason for this too is to get the tunnel up and over so you get some airflow. It'll create like a heat barrier. And um, you know, if this is right against the floor, you're gonna start cooking the floor. So it'll give us a little thermal layer, hopefully get some air over it and um it'll also give us room for blankets and all the activities and things but yeah you can see dude it was making i had this all over my legs and arms and i think being at the end of the day and then getting cotton candied with a bunch of molten tar it's like being tar and feather i was like i'm just out my brain was like this this is we've had enough today so uh it is a new fresh day let's see how far we can get rome wasn't built in a day I don't know how far we're going to make it on the trans tunnel, but I'd like to at least get the rear section, maybe have a good idea, maybe we can get like welding rod or something and kind of build some sort of shape. And then I'll have to see if I can steal the boy's poster board, see if he has anything left. So let's get cracking. I wanted to show you guys something that I have the world's safest uh, snap off angle grinder. I bought this thing a while ago. It has horsepower. I stripped cars and all kinds of stuff with it. But this. This is what it does now. Oh uh, yeah, that's, look at it. So, um, at least it's stuck in the on position, so it still works. But I actually put gloves and stuff on when I use this thing because you can't make it stop. So there's that, that's always fun when you're in some tight area and you know that um, you basically have no control over your uh, grinder. Awesome. Okay. We raided the last of the boys' poster supply. Uh, he likes to make like NASCAR tracks and stuff. He draws on these. 
So don't tell him. And then I got to go to Staples because I own some new poster board. But this is stuff that I uh, use to make templates and patterns and things. Um, so this is the new one. And then I had this in the garage that I stole previously. And because we have to do a larger piece, I want to keep this one intact. But I'd like to start in the back. So that's what this guy's for. So let me kind of set it over here. We got a couple magnets here to help me hold it. And let me drop a patch piece. And like I said, I think we're going to start with the back. Maybe get it to like over here. And then that will give us, I think, a jump off point. Because the height of this, you know, is... is yeah, it's not quite in line with that. But obviously it's over like the yoke. So I'm hoping and thinking that will be a little taller than that and then we can kind of keep that angle going up to there although this might come straight back and then arch down or whatever but again let me get something out of here and then we can pull a stringadera and see how we're looking see if we can clear that but i'm almost thinking we're gonna have to come here come up and then flat but let's just do it as we go so this is going to be our first template and this gets rid of the little tail shaft piece and we're going to work our way that way you could go either which way it doesn't really matter i may get it to a point and then come back and then do this piece that may be easier because then i've got a simple piece and a simple piece and then the oddball in the center so maybe that's a good idea and there's a million ways to skin a cat but i just put this on here magnet it down crawl underneath get a rough line of what's what and there you go so the other thing too is when you make a template like this I'm gonna, it needs to go past this edge. So I'll cut this larger than I want it and it will go past this and then I can kind of stuff it down, right? And then weld this side of it. I want like quarter inch, maybe even half inch past. And then I can go underneath and actually beat it, like cut it a little bit and beat it against the edge so I have like a flange there. So it'll be welded here, then we can beat it down and it kind of seals it up. Um, that's the way I kind of like to do it. And then when you stuff it down, I mean, technically what you could do if you don't want that seam there, but again, it's going to give it rigidity where you put the new thing in. When you push it down, you can mark on this side and that'd give you a nice cut. But if you leave it long, you're not going to really, you'll have something to back it when you weld in case you blow through. So it's not just a butt weld. You'll get a little more strength if you overlap it. And then um, that way you don't have pinholes and BS to contend with. So we're going to do it like that. Quick and dirty, easy. So this is my first template. We'll cut it out. I'm going to leave some meat on here and we'll make this out of sheet steel and then we'll stuff it down and see how we go. And then on this back portion, we're just going to give, give us a couple little slices and whack it with the hammer to make it fit. We're not fancy. It's going to get covered with stuff that looks like this. Uh, and this is race car. We're not going to do crazy bead work or nothing, you know, insane. We're just going to stick some sheet steel over it so we can get to racing. We use the shears to cut this off of the bigger piece. And then because it's an odd shape and there's really not a straight edge on it, there's no reason to use stump shear, but we'll throw it in the Beverly over here and uh, get this boy cut out. So let's do that real quick. It's probably one of the most dangerous tools I have in here. And I used to keep this thing on, a, on the bench, on my big rolly bench. And people want to come over and everybody wants to play with this thing and grab the handle. So now I hide it back here in the corner and when you see it nine times out of ten, it's either not bolted down over here or clamped as you see it now or the handle's facing down. So like that, it usually just sits in that position. Looks like my clamp is a little, a little weak sauce. So this has a short throat on it and it allows you to do curves and things with it. I don't know if you guys can see how it works, but basically a handle, lever, put it on your line, you just pull it. It's like a it's like scissors basically. And then when you get to an edge, like right here is a corner, I can just pivot like that and then cruise down on the next one. And then do the same when you get to the new corner. Let the radius this one out a little bit. Let's come back with some grinder or something to 
get that hard angle if I want that there. Makes quick work. And it doesn't throw sparks, which is nice. Okay, so that's a rough cut. A little off over here, but like I said, this thing should be a little long anyway. Um, we'll just take a grinder real quick and kind of burn it and take the corners off so I don't stab myself when we're trying to fit it. But let's go roll this thing over and fit it in the core, see what we did. So obviously this is a flat piece. Uh, we, have a great, we have a radius here. I do have a slip roll, but it's in the back. And I don't want to go dig it out. So an easy way to uh, get a radius bend is the old thigh trick. You just put it over your thigh. Oh, I should probably have two gloves on, but that's besides the point. Let's give it a little heave ho. Get a radius going. And then you just keep working it and smush it over. And that'll be good enough for what we're trying to do, right boys? So let me work this a little bit over the old thigh roller. And we will slide it in and I'll show you guys uh, what it looks like. Okay, so here's the start um, to it. I just stuffed it in, wrestled it in place, got the old glue gun out, and then it wanted to pop out up here, it wasn't being friendly. So I cut little notches so this could go beneath, and then we need the overhang because there's a bit of a gap here. So what I'm hoping to do is maybe give it a couple slices, beat on this a bit to close that gap, and then we'll just stick this portion to the top back here somewhere. And this is a little longer than I want it, but we'll kind of situate this with some more tacks. We'll get the hammer out, make sure this thing kind of lays flush. Some clamps, I guess, too, would also facilitate that. So let me put a few more tacks on here, and then we'll pull the yoke from underneath, and we'll get a line on here, and then I'll probably cut it, because you can see where it's longer, but it's not really tucked under here, and then this doesn't really serve a purpose, so we'll bring it out as far as we can and then we'll cut the excess that hangs over kind of straight. Um, I left it long on purpose so we could do that because otherwise you start getting these weird ends and it just doesn't work very well because when you put these in here like I said it's an organic deal. Nothing's square and everything's kind of wonky. So you just do your best, leave stuff long so you can come back and clean it up and then that way when you build the next section it's not um, as dopey. So let me mess with this a little bit. We'll do our cut and I'll show you and then I think we'll move on to maybe the bigger section up here and we'll, we'll wrestle that in place and uh, keep rolling. A couple love taps later, I just smacked this so it gave me that radius and then made some cuts right where the fold would have been and then beat it till it overlapped, cut it off and then that shortens this up a little bit and we had the overhang like you remember, see? Ah? And then whoop, you zip it so when you weld it up people don't think you're a complete hack, but yeah. Bend it over your thigh, beat it up a little bit, and life is good. So let me pull the yoke out so we're not cutting into our nice yoke that's underneath there. What's up, yoke buddy? And we will get as straight as straight as line as we can. We'll put a new cutoff wheel because this thing's dying. And then we will make a cut here. We'll determine where we want it. And then um, we can look over there and see what we can do about making a big mamma jamma. So we're under the boom. I stuffed my large piece of poster board um, around the transmission. You can see we just left it super long. So I got a pile of magnets. So what we're gonna try to do is magnet the length, you know, to the opening. So it's kind of like up and then we'll get inside and we'll run our marker right along the floor pan, like on the edge. So we can draw on the side of this thing. So we know how much lip to leave and then we got our little dude up there i don't know if you can see it hi little dude so he is facilitating my gap that guy there and all in all it looks pretty good i mean i just slid around the inside but i'd like to get it kind of nice and tight so it doesn't move when i'm drawing on this i thought about trying to like put my hand underneath here and draw but it screws the angle up so we're gonna try to magnet some of the excess in place so it's kind of steady when we draw because that's a pretty big piece to waste if we get it wrong. And then, yeah, this dude, again, this will overlap. So when we pull all this stuff back out, we'll come underneath here and beat all these flush. We can even do some sort of a uh, undercoat if we're feeling froggy. 
Okay, I got a bunch of magnets up against the floor holding this thing. Kind of wrestled it from underneath. Let's see, now we get an idea. Uh, there we go. Hey, look at our gap isn't even that bad. I did that. I I meant to do that, of course. I mean, you know, the level that we're we're at over here. Of course, when you're underneath, you can't see. You just perfectly line things up. First time every time, right? Anyway, anyway, enough fake gloating. This is what we're gonna do. And now the magnets are holding it. I'm gonna gently just put my little marker here and just do one of those all the way around. And then we're gonna leave excess because again, we're gonna weld it here and then we'll jump underneath and fold the thing around. And then that'll give us, you know, a little more structure. And it's just easier because if you try to cut this exact, you're not gonna nail it and then you're gonna have gaps and it's gonna be hard. So don't make your life hard. Make your mark, leave some length. You'll struggle to fit it in, but you're gonna have a better go at it. And what you can even do, if you really wanna get froggy, is we can make our mark and we make our template. You can make your template with the mark and then put a little bend where the mark is. Maybe we'll do that so it has a little flange. So that way you're going right in place of where uh, you want it to be. So, I mean, all in all, it's funny because it doesn't look like it grew really that much, but it, it came down a lot steeper, you know, over here. So ultimately we just grew enough to hopefully fit stuff. And then, um, yeah, we'll have to crawl back underneath there. I want to see what kind of fitting room I have, but I think we may go the banjo route. So just because uh, we can make life simple. All right, so here is our template toward the front of the vehicle, driver's side. And then you can see it's just, a, it's an oddball shape, man. So it's one of those things that in a million years, unless you make a template, I don't know how you would do that. And a lot of guys make square tunnels. I know that. My OCD gets to me. I don't, a square transmission tunnel is like a square burger. I won't eat Wendy's because they have square hamburger patties and it is odd. So I would rather struggle and have some out around transmission tunnel than a square one. It's just me. I mean, I guess you could do all those brakes in it, but I don't know. Seems like the same amount of effort. Who eats square freaking hamburgers? Let's cut this thing out. I'll leave a lip on it all the way around and then we will make it out of the sheet steel beneath it and we'll go struggle and tack this in place and we'll see if we can't get the third piece of the puzzle made and uh, we'll see how long this thing fights me ta-da so there it is the big old mamma jamma she's just like tacked up but we still got a pretty uniform gap for what it is we've got the height that we need I'm gonna have to pull on this and kind of make the radius a little bit better on probably both of these. And now what we can do is we can just make our last little uh, patch panel. So it'll take me a little bit. I'm a little tired, man. I was, I've been up and down and back and forth trying to get this thing in there to get these gaps tight. And I was wedging stuff against like the transmission to hold it tight and I'd get up here and tack one and then I'd get back down there and re-wedge it. So it was kind of a mission and um, I'm happy with it. We've got a flange on the bottom side that I'm gonna to have to address, but I can do that when the transmission moves and I can get a hammer and start swinging and, and really clean up the bottom side of it. But we'll get the whole top side pretty, I mean, it's pretty well tacked and now it's not gonna go anywhere. So maybe we'll finish weld all that with the transmission out of the way, because that, that thing ain't moving. This is tacked in pretty good too. So let's make this last and final piece. I'll bring you guys back with that tacked in and then we'll wrap the video. <laughs> All right, there she is. Uh, it's all tacked up. And I'm happy with how it turned out for the most part. It's good enough for race car. Got a little lazy on this one. We just went over the top and then we tucked the sides down and then we'll weld it. And this will all get finished, finished welded. And we're gonna pull the trans and everything out. And then I can beat, like I said, this has a flange. So we'll beat the flange around. Um, so it has some added rigidity, maybe even tack some of the flanges to the, like the bottom of the floor. But all in all, I think it turned out good for what it is. We spent pretty much the whole day out here doing this just to get it tacked up like that, like you see it. 
get you a shot from the other side. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty good, you know? So, it takes some sheet steel, a bit of effort, maybe some, if you got some stick leg chicken thighs like I do, you can just, you know, push the sheet steel over it, bend it on up, slam it on home. And you just fill in that big ugly hole where you just put the 480 E. So we can get back to doing fun things like making it go faster now. So hopefully that helps us solve the drive portion of Rocky Mountain Race Week and the speed portion. And that thing, that 480 E, man, it's going to be a game changer for this car, I feel. And then we have some other things coming. At a certain point, we're going to have to spin it around. I got to figure out the wheel situation. Not sure if we're going to do just a 10 inch set of these if i'm gonna run these these are eights but i want to go to a 25 10 and a half tire so i don't know if i want the bulge i think i'd like an off the shelf wheel so i may look around for some used weld uh, drag light wheels or we just go back to vision jags or whatever and get a set that look identical to those but in the 10 inch fashion which is hilarious because i've actually had them and then i sold them at the swap meet because they didn't fit the car and now here we are but that's life right so we'll make decisions on that trans is looking good we'll pull the transmission and everything out we're gonna send that thing hopefully to ryan jans here sooner than later i'll finish the transmission until after the transmission out of the way we'll weld it like i said and make it all nice nice then we move on to the next thing you guys thank you for following along thank you for the encouragement get out there in the garage and do it you don't need fancy special tools uh you just need determination uh and some patience and a big big hammer you guys like subscribe share till next time i'm out